Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. And here I have the beginner sweater put together, except for one of the raglan seams in the back and the side seams. I have three of the raglan seams in. And I'm going to do the neckband next. And the first step on a neckband is to determine how many needles to make the neckband. So what I'm going to do is, for once in this, this whole series, I am not going to be particularly gentle. I'm going to stretch this neckband. Let's see, I think I'll start at 10 left. And the, others, the other end is going to be right here in this, this stitch here. And you want to stretch this. You want to get this as long as you can. The reason is that the neckband draws in quite a bit. And I wonder if I can go a little further with it. I think that's really the limit right there. And then what you want to do is arrange the needles, two out, one back, two out, one back, on a cross. Now I have put a suggested number of needles in the pattern, but I want you to stretch your own neckband across the needles and try to get as long of a neckband as possible because mock ribbing is not the stretchiest neck. and This needs to pull over the child's head. Okay, after I've worked out how many needles I'm going to use, I've gone ahead and knitted a row and hung a comb and hung weights and hung my clothespins. And now I'm going to do eight or nine rows of the scrap yarn. Okay, the scrap yarn is on and I'm doing a row of ravel cord. And just to make the ravel cord a little easier to handle, I'm hanging a clothespin on each end, as I often do. Then I'm going to thread up with the main garment yarn. And now here's something that's different from the other hand that we did with the mock rib. I want you to turn it all the way up to tension 10. I want this first row to go in loose. So that's your first row, and then you immediately turn it down to your normal mock rib tension. And I'm going to go 20 rows, which will give me a 10 row deep hem. Once I have my 20 rows knitted, and I did count that first loose row as one of the 20, then I want some yarn to bind off with later. So I am clipping the yarn after pulling out a couple of yards. And I'll set that aside. And then I'm going to take this off on waist yarn that has a very strong contrast. Please notice that I did not push the needles back out of work. I need these needles still in the same position so that I can tell which needles to pick the neck back band onto. And I'm going to begin at the stitch just to the left of the center front. So I'm going to start by putting a transfer tool in that stitch on the far right stitch. And then I'm also going to pick up a stitch from the sleeve and put it on the far left stitch. And I certainly took this stretching business to extremes. Now, as I go down here, what I want to do is get exactly one stitch in from the edge. I want a very straight line along this neck. So, what I'm going to do is uncurl it and make sure that I just have the two strands over my tool so that I get this in, an, in a straight line. Now, as I pick, pick the um, needles through the, through the uh, sweater, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pull them on out to E position. And the reason that I'm doing that is that it will, it will all stay in place pretty well that way. I'm going to come over to this side and pick up the next one. And I really, I really did stretch it pretty hard. And then I like to kind of go to the middle and then go to the middle of the next section 
always checking my work to make sure that I'm actually picking out a needle that is just the same distance from the edge. How good this looks, like any other seam, is going to depend on how straight you get it. So, I like hanging it out with, on with the right side facing because you can really see exactly where you need to put the transfer tool. And I just pick the stitch that's nearest. Once I have this whole left side of this neck on, I'm just pushing it all the way back against the gate pegs and bringing the needles all the way out. And then I want to grab the neck band that I just set aside. You want to hold the neck band up with the ravel cord up because this is the side you put on first. And you want to hold the neck band up with the right sides together. So this is the right side of the sweater and this is the wrong side of the neckband. The right sides are touching. And what I'm going to do is pick up the stitches on the last row of turquoise and then, then you need. And I'm going to get those hung on these, on these hooks. And the thing that you want to do at this point is not push these back. This is just going to be out on the ends of the hook. And if you want a quick review, you can go back and look at that method one of joining a shoulder. This is going to be very, very similar. The main difference is that it's mock rib, and then a secondary difference is that I took the trouble to put a very loose row because I want this to pull through and still have a little bit of, uh, of stitch so that it'll knit off. I don't want things to be horribly tight once I pull through. So I'm just getting these on pretty quickly and easily. And you note that I'm not staggered. I'm using the same needles that I knitted it on. And the old rule applies that when you hang the bottom of, of, the, of the hem, you're always going to be one short. So that one over there is the one I'm short. Next, you need the needle pusher tool. You're going to go along and close the latches. So all my latches are closed. Then I'm going to push the needles back a few at a time, part way at a time. Push a few more until they're just really ready to pop on back through. And then I just take this pusher and I pop them through. And the, the neck band will knit right through the sweater. And in fact, you can see the stitches showing through here. I'm going to do a close-up so you can see how that looks. Okay, now you can see how this looks. There isn't any of the main sweater hanging from these hooks. What's hanging from the hooks is actually that loose row of knitting that I did when I started the neckband. And now I get a transfer tool, and I'll take one of these weights off. And I'm just going to fold the hem up and hang it on needles up above. Now, I need to fill in the empty needles. So it's the same old story. I'm picking up one in the left of the pair and then I'm picking up the empty and then I'm coming over and I'm picking up the left a stitch on the left of the two hooks and then a stitch in the empty hook. I'm going to do that on across 